In this video, we'll go over Euler's method. This is probably the simplest numerical approach to solving differential equations. After studying this video, you should be able to understand how Euler's method is derived from the Taylor series. You should also be able to describe the behavior of the local and global truncation error of Euler's method. And we'll talk about what the difference is between local and global truncation error. Also, you'll learn how to find the analytical solution of a first order differential equation using separation of variables and implement Euler's method in MATLAB. So consider the general initial value problem for any first order ordinary differential equation. We can write that problem as dy dt is equal to f some function of t and y and we'll be given some initial condition which we'll just take y at some t naught equals 0 equal to y0. So starting with y naught, we can estimate the solution one step, we'll call the step size h delta t, so one step h forward in time using a Taylor series expansion for y1. So y1 would be equal to y naught plus dy dt evaluated at t equals 0 times h plus terms order h squared and higher. These again are our higher order terms. So Euler's method basically says, well, let's just neglect those or truncate the terms second order and higher from the Taylor series. And now we can develop a method because we know that dy dt is equal to whatever our function is defining our differential equation. So we could then solve for y1 is equal to y naught plus that function evaluated at t naught, which in this case is equal to 0, and y naught. Now that we have y1 and t1 would just be t naught plus h, we could solve for y2. That's going to be y1 plus that function that defines our differential equation evaluated at t1 and y1. Then we could solve for y3 using y2 plus f at t2 y2 and so on. And we would call this a time stepping solution and we are stepping forward in time from the initial condition and for that reason this is often called forward Euler. So look a little more at that solution scheme. So again, we're going to generate the solution stepping forward in time with the general algorithm of y i plus 1 is equal to y i plus our function evaluated at t i and y i. I'm sorry, I forgot the h here. So we've got to multiply by h in each of these time steps. So we've got our iteration scheme to step forward in time using Euler's method for the ith time step and we'll do this for each discrete value of t so ti in increments of h again that's our delta t using that same h variable we used talking about differentiation and integration and however long we want to solve the equation for we'll call the time span of the solution So how this is going to work is this is just going to be a some constant. So basically what we're doing is we are assuming that y varies linearly with some constant slope over that increment h. So just to look at this graphically, if we start with some 
y not equal 3 and we step forward in h the slope in this first region m would be our function f evaluated at t naught and y naught so we're using that slope to step forward in time and then we would step again forward another step in time now with a new slope m equal to f at t1 and y1 so taking our value at that point this h would be our t1 point using that to calculate the slope dy dt using our function f of ty that evaluates the differential equation and stepping forward in time and we can do that we would do it again and again and each time we've got a new we're assuming basically linear behavior over delta t so obviously there's going to be some error in this approach so let's look at that error so the truncation error we can get a handle on what the truncation error is doing by looking at the first truncated term of the Taylor series which would be the second order term involving the second derivative and h squared over 2 so this tells us that the error is going to be larger depending on the curvature of the underlying solution to the differential equation and the method is for an individual time step is order h squared so again if we look at that solution if this dashed line here represents some true solution that we may or may not be able to solve for analytically then we can see how that error is going to behave we would start again with Euler's method starting at y naught take the slope so the slope here again is f at t naught y naught which is equal to dy dt evaluated at t equals zero so we take that slope and we get to our first point on our solution so here would be our truncation error et from that first point then we'll go to our next point on our solution so we can see our slope looks about like that so we would take a parallel line again we're stepping forward from the result of the first interval so this gets us up to here and we have so if this was ET1 the truncation error in our first time step in our next time step we have some total total truncation error ET which is going to equal the truncation error from the first time step plus the truncation error from the second time step because we've added additional error with that next time step and then we would go again so we'll take that slope again it's going to be parallel gets us to our third time step take the slope draw a parallel line to our fourth time step so as we are going forward in time we know the individual truncation error ET is going to be order h squared and proportional to the second derivative and we can see that here here where the curvature of the function is greatest just looking at this conceptual solution where that curvature is greatest that's where we got the the largest truncation errors these first couple time steps and then the curvature is less down here and our truncation error is a little bit less so we call this truncation error that's happening with each time step that would be our local truncation error so 
we know we're going to have that local truncation error, but it also adds up and accumulates as we move forward in the solution. And we're going to have a total of n time steps in our solution, some total number of time steps. where n is equal to our time span divided by h, our increment. And we can get a sense on how this error accumulates if we look at a global truncation error. Which we'll call ETG. That's going to be the total time, t span, over h times our local error h squared and we see that this h would cancel out that h squared and that global error is order h. So we would say that Euler, Euler's method is a first order accurate method because the global truncation error is proportional to h. So we can look at that total error for Euler's method. So like I showed on the previous slide, the global truncation error is first order accurate. So we can look at how can we improve the solution to improve the accuracy. Well one step to improving the solution is simply to reduce that step size. Since it's first order accurate, if we had some global error at equal to say 0 0.1 for h equal 0 0.1 then if we cut h in half say h equals 0 0.05 we would cut the error in half or we would expect an error on the order of 0 0.05. So again, that's that first order behavior, and that's similar to what we've been talking about before with integration and differentiation. We also know since the local truncation error is proportional to the second derivative, that the solution will be exact if the underlying function is linear. So if that solution to the differential equation was a linear function, we would have an exact solution. And this is another meaning of the idea that this is a first order method. So it's a first order method because it's proportional to h to the 1, and it's a first order method because it's solution, it would result in an exact solution if the underlying numerical solution to the differential equation is a linear function. This is a method derived from the Taylor series, and higher order methods derived from the Taylor series will follow the same pattern. So for example, if we have a local error, local truncation error that's order h cubed, so let's say we de developed a numerical method using that included the second derivative term in the Taylor series, then the global error would be order h squared. So here's a MATLAB function to implement Euler's method. So there's some input checking here and basically we define our this method takes time span in an initial vector t naught being our initial time, tf being our final time and here we extract those, define our time values. Now, if t naught and tf, if our t, basically if t span divided by n is not an even number, or is not uh, an integer, sorry, not an integer, t span divided by h is not an integer, meaning say we had 
t naught is equal to zero, t final is equal to two, and h is equal to zero point three. Well, in that case, we wouldn't get, we wouldn't land exactly at two using our even h increment. So that's what this little section of code does is basically it adds one more t value to our independent time values in the event that uh, the time span is not evenly divisible by h. Then we pre-allocate our vector of solution values and simply go through a for loop implementing that iteration scheme. So dy dt is going to be our function. So that's f of t and y. And then we could also have parameters here using var again in this function. So it's really important to note that t comes first, then y. So that order, f of t, then y, is critical for using this M file. So let's look at applying it in an example. So here we're going to use Euler's method to solve the following initial value problem over the interval from t equals 0 to 2. Given an initial condition, y at t equals 0 is equal to 1. And we'll compare the results to the analytical solution. Well, first, let's solve for the analytical solution for this function. And we'll use a technique to get the analytical solution by separation of variables. And the way that works is we're just going to get the all of the y's on one side and the t's on the other side. So to do that we would get dy over square root of y is equal to 1 plus 2t dt. And then we're going to integrate the left hand side from our initial y value, so from 1 to y, and from our initial t value, which is 0, to t. So the uh, left hand side becomes y to the 1 half over 1 half evaluated from 1 to y. The right hand side becomes t plus 2 times t squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to t. So plugging in our limits of integration we get and taking care of that one half we get two times y to the one half minus two times one to the one half is equal to t plus t squared solving for y we get y is equal to t plus t squared plus 2. We'll divide the whole thing by 2 and square it. So that would be our analytical solution. Then for our numerical solution, we're going to use Euler's method and our function f of t y is just that right hand side because this is already set up in the form dy dt equals some function of t and y so our function would just be 1 plus 2 t times the square root of y for our numerical solution so let's look at the code to implement that so here is the formulation f of t, y for the numerical solution. 
defining the time span and we're going to solve this for four different h values and see how the solution behaves so here is our uh, here is our uh, four different function calls to Euler's method and the only thing different between each of these function calls is we're calling it with a different value of h and then here just entering our equation for the analytical solution and evaluating that at some time values and then plotting it and what we see as we would expect is the smaller the h value is the closer we get to that true solution or the analytical solution is always our true exact solution you see we get very close with the green dashed line here where h equals 0 0.01 we can also look at that error behavior so looking at the global error you can see that this distance right here would be our global error where h is equal to 0 0.25 and this distance here would be our global error with h is equal to 0 0.5 and just looking by inspection as we would expect since this is a first order method you can see that the error at h equals 0 0.25 is approximately equal to the error at h equals 0 0.5 divided by 2. So that's about what we would expect. Recall that that global truncation error is order h first order accurate method. So let's see where we go from here uh, as we continue our work in looking at numerical solutions to differential equations. We'll look at the concept of stability of numerical solutions, then we'll apply Euler's method to systems of ordinary differential equations. We'll look at higher order differential equations and starting with initial value problems with higher order differential equations. Then we'll look at some improvements to Euler's method. We'll develop some higher order methods derived from the Taylor series and also look at some other approaches that are not derived from Taylor series. We'll look at all of that theoretical work will help you understand how MATLAB's built-in ODE solvers work. MATLAB has a number of built-in functions for ODEs and understanding a little bit about the underlying theory is really important for picking which one to use for a specific problem. And finally we'll look at solving higher order differential equations that are formulated as boundary value problems. And that concludes this video.